Hello, welcome or welcome back to Reads of an Apple. My name is Stacy, and today I'm here, as you probably saw from the thumbnail and the title of this video, but a new readathon is happening, and this is the Kindle Unlimited readathon. I'm very excited for it. So yeah, let's get into it. It is going to run from January 26th through 29th, so long weekend style readathon. It will be the first full weekend in my new apartment, so I'm hoping I can just kind of relax and read and do whatever the heck I want, and I won't have any roommates or anybody else in the house. It'll just be me, and I can do all night reading if I want to, and I'm very very excited. I am a KU subscriber. I'm a big fan of the service. And yeah, I'm excited that this is going to kind of push me to um, pick up some more KU books so far this month. And um, I've been really kind of pushing to do more library books, but this is also another good option as well outside of libraries, I think, to get a lot of different kinds of ebooks. Plus, as you will notice, a lot of authors, if they are mostly K, like if most of their backlist and releases go to KU, if not all of them, and they have audiobooks, a lot of them are KU read and listen. So you can get the audiobooks for free through KU. So we will go over the bingo board that I created. It is a build your own bingo board. And then I'm going to go over the books that I have already checked out on KU and then talk about some other books that I may or may not pick up what I'm looking to pick up and things like that. But first off, let's talk about the hosts. This is hosted by Cheyenne from That Tall Book Girl, Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life, Sam from Sam Reads a Little, Melissa from Book Bar, Jess from Honest Fiction Club, and Tiffany from Neverland Pixie on Instagram, and Tiff Talks Pages on YouTube. So I will link everybody down below. Um, Tiffany made all of the super fun graphics that are on everybody's Instagrams. So definitely check them all out. And yeah, it's because it's a shorter readathon. It is a three by three bingo board. So you only have to pick nine prompts. And what I did is I looked at what I already had checked out on KU, what I may or may not be interested in picking up specifically for this readathon. And I picked my prompts based off of those. <laughs> so here is the bingo board I created. We have a book you didn't get to last year, a book that's been in your library the longest, favorite genre or trope, a series um, you've been putting off, new to you author, a recommendation from a friend, under 250 pages, debut author, and tattooed hero. So that is my bingo board. Um... Yeah, so let me pull up my Kindle here and I have notes. Now, when I go to my library and I select everything that's KU, I technically have 27 books <laughs> because I am also a Prime member and um, there are two different services that Prime itself offers outside of KU and that is Prime Reading and... Um, First Reads. So First Reads, typically the books end up on KU once they are released, but they allow you to check the book out up to a month in advance before it's released. So a couple of these books that I have are Amazon First Reads, but they are now available in Kindle Unlimited, so I will mention them. I also have Prime Reading books that are all, all of the Prime Reading books I have are also on KU. And a good like trick if you have both of them is when you get an email about new books added to either the prime reading or the uh, first books and on my Kindle some of them show up as prime reading books if I do um, the first reads thing and sometimes um, they just show up as prime reading but you will get an email from Amazon when there are new books added to either of these services. The first reads is usually at the beginning of every month and then you can check them out that way because it does get a little bit confusing when you go to a book and you can't then, like, it might force you to check it out via Kindle Unlimited. So you, 
it's kind of funky the way that you have to go through it. I usually just go through for those two specific services when they send a new email, when there's new books available for those services, then I check them out. But I have five books from Prime Reading, I believe. And then I have my 20 KU books. And then I have four books right now that I've gotten from the First Reads. Now, First Reads is is usually editors picks for new releases coming up from Amazon and they don't always have a romance book and even then they don't always have a romance book that I am interested in so I only have a couple of those that I got from eFirst Reads and then one of them I have um I have checked out the one for January that's a romance it's a clean romance but it looked cute but I am not going to be getting it because for some reason it's not going to send it to me until the beginning of February, even though it was technically the January first read. So I don't know what's happening there, if the service is slightly changing or not, but I wanted to just throw out those other two services because if you have them, that allows you to check. If you have Amazon Prime and you have KU using your Amazon Prime reads, that means you can basically end up with more than 20 books that are technically Kindle Unlimited books. So I am going to be slightly fudging things a little bit here, but that's because I have all of these great services and I want to try to take advantage of the things that I'm paying for as much as I can. So there we go. Um, so let's just go through them. Um, let's go over what books I have on my Kindle first and then we'll talk about the few books that are on my idea list that are already checked out for me. So first off, um, I am going to, uh, mention, I have, I made a list and I tore it off my notepad, but then what did I do with it? It's right here. Okay. My goodness. Wait, we to start off this video, right? I'm all over the place. <sighs> okay. So when I pull up the KU books on my library that picks up all of the books that are part of Prime Reading and Kindle Unlimited. So like I said, it shows as 27. And then I have a couple books that are technically on KU, but I got them as the Amazon First Reads books. But for some reason, when they downloaded, they weren't marked as Prime Reading or as also available on KU. So they aren't in this 27 book list. So technically I have 29 books on my Kindle that are from Amazon slash Amazon KU services. <sighs> okay, and I just glanced at the two names so I can try to still get them in here in alphabetical order. And that's the way that I'm going. So the first book I have, this is on KU is Resisting Maxu. This is the sixth book in the Clacanian series by Victoria Aveline. This is one of my favorite sci-fi series. The paperback actually just went live for this book and I should be getting it soon, but I was highly anticipating this release. I never got to it when it came out and I need to pick it up as soon as I can. I don't know if it will be during this readathon, but this is a great KU sci-fi romance option if you're looking for something more sci-fi. Then one of my e uh, first reads books that is also available on Kindle Unlimited is Digging Up Love. This is the first book in the Taste of Love series by Chandra Blumberg maybe Bloomberg. I believe this is also her debut book, so that would work for um, a debut as well. And this is one of the books that is uh, also has the audiobook via Kindle Unlimited. So if I read this book, I might be picking up the audio via Kindle Unlimited instead of reading the ebook through um, the first reads thing that I checked it out with. So that's where things are kind of being fudged between lines for me because if the KU option has the audiobook and I can try to get the audiobook, pick up a couple audiobooks to listen at work on Thursday and Friday, that would be like awesome. 
Okay, then I also have Once Upon a Midnight Kiss by Elisa Braden checked out on KU. This is a Regency historical holiday novella. As soon as it was pulled from the big anthology and she was able to release it herself, I downloaded it. I still have not gotten to it yet, but it's a little past the time for that, but it's Elisa Braden. I will leave it checked out until I read it. Then I have a new release, um, also from KU. So this is, most of these are from KU. So I will stop saying they're from KU because all of these books are available on KU. And I will just let you know the ones that I checked out via the other options. So Golden Hour, this is the third book in the Finch Family series. This came out the end of December. I'm very excited. This is one of the books I'm I is like higher up in my list of what I want to get to during this readathon because I'm very excited to get caught back up in this series. This is Grumpy Sunshine, Age Gap. I'm very, very excited. And Jenny has been teasing that the sisters book, which is book four, there's a pretty big cliffhanger or hint or something going on that will be leading up to the sisters book because some people are like oh my gosh I want her book now so I'm very excited for that as well and she will be a single mom romance so moving on um I have um this via prime reading and this is condemned to love this is a mafia romance this is book one in the Mazzoni Mafia series but this is also available on KU then I have checked out Dragon Unraveled by November Dawn. This is her second book. I'm very excited for it. This is a dragon shifter romance. Her first book was a demon book and it was super intriguing and it was her debut novel and I read it for Farrafeb last year and I'm I'm very excited for her to read another book from November Dawn and I hope that she starts publishing more because it's been a while since the first book came out and her first book came out and now we've got this one and I want another book in this demon series because I'm very excited for it. But anyway, I have that checked out. Then I am slowly working my way through the rest of the Horde Kings series by Zoe Draven and this is Horde Kings of Dakar book four, Broken by the Horde King. I've talked about this series a lot before. I had read the first two books back when they first came out and there was nothing else in the series so I read through most of the rest of her backlist and for some reason never came back to this series when more books came out. So yeah, I am trying to get caught back up on Zoe Draven. Then I have Call Her Mine by Melissa Foster. This is the first book in her Harmony Point series. I got this through Prime Reading and this one also does have um, the audio as well via KU. Then I have checked out Wasted Words by Stacey Hart. This is the first book in her Austin series and this is a uh, a series of books where each book is a retelling of a Jane Austen novel and this one is specifically retelling Emma. Then I have uh, book seven from Felicity Heaton's Eternal Mates uh, series. I'm a big fan of this series. It's been a while since I read it. There's now over 20 books in this series. But anyway, book seven is where I last left off and that is Taken by a Dragon and this has been an anticipated read of mine since... I don't know, 2018, 2019. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely need to pick this book up. And these are all recently, Felicity Heaton recently put this series on KU. So I'm very excited for that. Then a book that has been on my TBR the last couple months of 2022 that I just kept putting off is the second book book in Sarah L. Hudson's Space Cowgirl series. This, er, Space series. This is Space Cowgirl, Houston, All Systems Go. And this is the uh, astronaut that we meet in the first book and her romance with the hero's older brother who owns a ranch in Texas from the first book. So I'm very excited for this. 
Then I got through Prime Reading, and it is also available on KU, is Love Next Door by Helena Hunting. This is Lakeside book number one. And what is this? Love Next Door. It does have um, audio via KU as well. Then I need to finish the Miles Family series by Claire Kingsley, and I am up to book four, which is Hidden Miles. Oh, I have so many series that I just leave abandoned, and it breaks my heart when I'm like, I love that series. I love that author. Why did I never finish that series? So this is another one I need to finish. Then I currently have checked out Amori by Kimberly Knight. Amori. Amore. Um, I checked this out. This is the first book in the ABCs of Love series, which is a multi-author series. And there is an ABCs of uh, Love read-along happening hosted by Jen and Jackie. And the live show is during the weekend of this readathon. There's a lot of live shows <laughs> that are the weekend of this readathon, but um, I was hoping to uh, maybe wait and maybe read this book. And then the second book is Beckon for the read along. So I might try to wait and read the second book during the readathon because the live show I think is on Tuesday. So I could pick this up like Wednesday night and read most of it Wednesday night and Thursday for the readathon and then still get it done in time. And then it does double duty, which would be nice. But right now I have the first book checked out. So that one might get read before the readathon and I might read the second one for the readathon, but Moving on, um, through Prime Reading, I have Buck Wild, which is the first book in Lauren Landish's Bennett Boys Ranch series. This is another one that is also has the audio on KU. Then I have Glitch by Brianna Michaels checked out. This is the first book in her Next Level series. And what I remember about this one is they're both gamers, video gamers. And they're like friends online and then they meet each other or they somehow find each other in real life. And I guess it's supposed to be kind of steamy. But... I love nerd culture, so I checked that out right away as soon as I heard it. Then one of the oldest checked out books on my Kindle is The Vampire's Mail Order Bride by Kristen Painter. This is the first book in her Nocturne Falls series. I need to read a uh, romance where, or I need to read a paranormal book with one of the main characters being a vampire for Romanceopoly. That's my current role for that. So I am leaning towards picking this up during the readathon so it can once again do double duty. For prime reading, I have uh, The Highland Fling by Megan Quinn. This is another one that um, most of, actually, most of Megan Quinn's books have the audio also available through KU. So I'm throwing that out there. Then I have another anticipated release I never got to, A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee checked out. I've had this checked out since release day. I'm a big fan of her contemporary new adult books. So when she announced she was writing fantasy, I have been psyched and I am still psyched. And now there are two, almost three books out in this series and I still have not read them. <sighs> um, <laughs> for one of my prime reading checkouts, I have How to Catch an Alpha book number one, which is Catching Him by Aurora Rose Reynolds. And this also has the audio available in KU. Also checked out, I have This Christmas by Holiday or by Sarah Spade. This is Holiday Hunks book number two. The first book is a spinoff uh, or is a inspired by Hocus Pocus Halloween novella. I wanted to pick this one because this is Max's book 
and I never got to it through Chris around Christmas time, so I may pick it up because I need some holiday things for one of my reading challenges, so I might read it or I might find something else, but who knows. I have it checked out, though. Then we get to the books I have checked out from Alessa Thorne. She is one of my favorite KU authors. She writes paranormal and fantasy romance. I love her to pieces. And I have three books checked out from her right now. And it was four, but then I dropped one of them so I could check something else out. Because I technically... I had the next book in each of her series to check out, but one of them is technically a spinoff of one of the other series, so I returned that because I won't get to that series until I finish the other one. But anyway, I have Kiss of the Blood Prince, which is the first book in her Wrath of the Fey book. This is a fantasy romance series of which the spinoff series has just recently um, also concluded. And then I have Sharpest Edge, which is the second book in her Paranormal Mercenaries and Magic series. I read the first book for Love in the Night Readathon. I don't know why I haven't got caught up on Alessa Thorne's backlist. I love her books. I'm very excited for this book. So I will most likely be picking this book up, but I don't know. I've read so many paranormal romances this month. Okay, we'll touch base on that later. Then I also have Thanatos checked out from her, and this is the fifth book in her Court of the Underworld series. I need to finish this series. I have, I think there's seven books in this one, so I need to finish it. However, the other book that I returned is Set, which is the first book in her trilogy, Gods of the Duat, which are Egyptian mythos retellings. This one is Greek retellings focused around Hades and um, his people. The first book is Asterion. I loved it. But I, I want to read Gods of the Duat. I want to finish this book. I consider these more fantasy. I consider um, myth, uh, mythos retellings, fantasy romance and not paranormal romance. Don't ask me why. In my brain, that's what it is. So yeah. Then I have checked out through Prime Reading, Leviathan Song by Elsie Winters. This is a part of her Boundland series. I believe this is the first full-length book in the series. Another one I've had checked out since it was released. I've read her novellas before and like them. I just haven't gotten around to this one. And another popular fantasy book that has been on my Kindle since it came out was Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. This is the first book in her The Divine Between series. This was promoted last Pharaoh Feb as releasing soon. As soon as it came out, I checked it out and I still have not gotten to it. But some of these fantasy books with Farofeb being right around the corner, I might wait and pick them up in February. And then the final book I have here is uh, Love, Comment, and Subscribe by Kathy Yardley. This is the first book in her Ponto Beach Reunion series. I got this through Prime Reading. Um, however, this also is, I think technically this was a first read when I got it, but it's marked as prime reading on my Kindle, but this one is available and I believe most of this series and a lot of Kathy Yardley books are available through KU with audio. Okay, so that is the ones that are marked as KU books on my Kindle. The other two that I got um, as first reads that are now available on Kindle is The Astronaut and the Star by Jen Comfort. This is also available with audio on KU. And I really want to read this book. Um, I'm taking part in the No Resolutions, no Resolutions January Reading Challenge. And one of the prompts is a bonkers romance. And this book was recommended as one of the bonker romances by the hosts. So I was leaning towards picking this up. Technically, I have this not through KU, but I kind of want to pick up the audio for it. And that is available through, through KU. I also want to throw out her second book, Midnight Duet, just released on the 10th. Um, and this one does have audio and is on KU 
and I've heard really good reviews about it. So throwing her out there. And then I also, as a first reads, got West Side Love Story by Priscilla Oliveris. This is another one that is also available on KU, has the audio. West Side Story retelling with mariachi bands? And technically, this isn't a part of the series, but I'm more intrigued by Kiss Me Catalina, which is a newer release. Same thing, available on KU with audio. And this is a Kiss Me Kate retelling, which, let's be honest, Kiss Me Kate is a retelling of The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare, but it's one of my favorite musicals, and I... Technically, they're not listed as being part of a series, but they have the same covers. They're the same, like, musical retellings with, um, I'm not sure what, if it's Mexican or Spanish or a more specific Latin, Latinx culture retelling, but I know there's something about mariachi bands, at least with Kiss Me Catalina. I don't know if the first one has it, but I got the first one for free is the first reads but with them being so kind of musical based I kind of want to do the audiobooks because I don't know if there's going to be like music stuff or not but I know that the accents are going to be great so yeah so those are the ones I have on my kindle that are either currently available through KU or I have checked out currently on KU I know there are more I get free books all the time I have a KU private list in my Amazon wish list that has way too many books. I should go through and break them down by subgenres at some point, but there's a lot of times we'll get the first book for free in a series that, and it's also available on KU. And then I'll add the second book to that wish list, wish list and then I'll go through and a lot of them since a lot of authors are trying to add tropes or subgenres to the titles of their books, I can just go in there and I can search for historical and it'll show me all the ones that are marked as historical on that list. Which is what I did do um, for my ideas list. Now, this year I'm trying to be better at reading in my five main subgenres. And so, for what I'm kind of lacking for this month, even though I have technically read one or two already, um, I'd like more just so I can kind of build up some of those bonus books that I have at the end of the month or if I have a month that's lighter in a genre or I skip a genre for some reason. I want to at least start out strong in having some books. So historical is going to be a, a main point for me and fantasy romance because those are my two le least read genres for the month. And I am hoping to pick up oh my gosh you know what I just realized I have a historical checked out from KU that didn't pop up when I filtered my library and that is first of all by Lainey Hatcher um, I'm not sure if this is her debut book or, but this is her first series by herself. She also, and it has two books out and she's working on the third book or there's three books out and she's working on the fourth book. Um, but this is a fake dating historical romance, but she also has two books in a smarty pants romance that are also available in KU. And those are historical romance retellings of Penny Reed's Knitting in the Series, Knitting in the City series. So those are also on my long KU list. So I would like to try to pick up one of her books. Um, a couple other historical authors I'm super interested in that are the top of my list is Tracy Sumner. Some of her books are available in KU. Some of them are not. Um, one of the series that is available is her League of Lords, and this is a four book series. All four books are available on KU. Technically, I got the first book, Lady is Trouble, for free, um, but this series is available on KU. So I definitely want to start that series if I can. And then Miriam Minger also has a lot of books for, or that are on KU, and this is another one I got the first book for free, but the other two books in this series are 
are, all three books are on KU. Um, the first book is The Brigand's Bride, and this is the first book in her The Dangerous Masquerade series. A lot of her books are available on KU. If you're looking for indie historical authors, I know that is hard for people to kind of find. A lot of the Wolf Publishing and Dragon Blade Publishing historical books are available on KU. So if you're if you want to try to pare down who you're looking for, check out the publisher's websites and go from there and see if maybe you can narrow things down better on their site and then jump into KU and look for those authors. But I want to throw that out there because I know that a lot of people kind of struggle finding indie historical authors and let alone indie historical authors on KU. But there are a lot. I cannot tell you how many historical authors I have on my KU wish list. So that is one option of trying to find them a little bit easier. Then let me look at my quick list. I feel like I have a couple other people that I didn't mention. So, oh, for fantasy, for fantasy, bargain with um, the Fay King, Elf King. One of those by Megan Van Dyke. This is a small publisher. If you have not heard me talk about Megan Van Dyke, she is one of my favorite new fantasy authors. She made her debut last year. I am completely obsessed with her books. This is available on KU. This is fantasy romance. And I need to read this book because I have an arc for book number two, which comes out January 30th, I believe, and it will come out and be released to KU shortly after. So that one's not out yet, but they both will be available on KU. So I'm very excited. I have a physical copy of this book, but depending on how quickly I unpack, I might end up picking this up in KU, but I wanted to throw that out there because I do want to, and I am pushing myself to read at least this book and maybe I'll pick it up over that weekend and then I can read um, the arc shortly after. And I might fudge and count the arc because technically it will be on KU when it releases. It's just not on KU yet because it's not out yet. But yeah, so there is my very long, <laughs> very unmanageable KU ideal list. And who knows? I am very much a mood reader. And because I don't like some of these I have like book clubs and read alongs that are they're geared to but because most I got most of the rest of those done this is a free for all for me so I definitely will be picking some of the books off the shorter list I have of ones that are available for audio which are mostly contemporary romances it looks like so I will probably be picking up a couple um, contemporary romances as well. So I want to try to focus on that historical and fantasy romance, but there's, there's so much on KU. I cannot recommend the service more. And once again, if you have Amazon Prime, look at Prime Reading, look at eFirst Reads, especially if you read across genres and you're not just a romance reader, there are always mysteries and thrillers and nonfiction books available in the first reads. And you can get one a month usually with the first reads. Sometimes they'll do a special and you'll get to do more, you'll get to check out more than one of the first reads books but I usually just go for the romance ones. I think once I did get a nonfiction from somebody but then I ended up returning it because I was like when am I gonna read this? <laughs> so anyway I'll stop blabbering at you. I'm very excited as you can tell for the readathon and I love these types of readathons because you can kind of go a little more hay wild. This one and the Kindle Clear Out are always super fun. I think this is the first specific Kindle Unlimited one that I've seen. So I'm very excited. Once again, I have everybody posted down below and we'll see what happens. But I will be vlogging um, what I read. So stay tuned for that shortly after the readathon is over. 
let me know down below if you are joining or if you are excited about any of these or if you, or if you have a specific KU book that you would like to recommend that I can add to my list or just have on my radar. And if you'd want like to leave a comment, feel free to leave an emoji, leave me something yellow because the blocks on the bingo board are yellow. So do something yellow if you'd like to. Otherwise, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you all very soon. Mm -hmm.